Well, man, we'll let you pick it back up. All right. Things had escalated pretty quickly from there. The pounding and threats had continued every night. She'd been too scared to sleep in her bedroom and had started sleeping on the living room couch. Then one night, the pounding had begun not just on her bedroom closet, but all the closet doors in the house, all at the same time. Like there were people in all of them trying to get out all at once, she told us. But it was the same voice in every closet. That same horrible voice. In fear, she nailed all the closet doors shut to keep the thing, whatever it was, from coming out to get her. Then about two weeks ago, something even more terrifying had happened. She had been in her bathroom and was washing her hands in a sink. When she looked up into the medicine cabinet mirror, she paused. What'd you see? Jerry asked her. I saw it, she said in a choked whimper. I saw his face instead of my own. He was wearing a black robe with a hood and his face. His face was just a grinning skull. A skull with horns. His eyes were red. The eyes of the devil himself. I don't mean I saw it standing behind me in the mirror. It was in the mirror itself. I felt a shiver crawl up my spine. It reached out of the mirror. It didn't have hands, it was like claws, and it tried to grab me. In horror, she had thrown a bottle of lotion at the mirror, shattering the glass. Then, to be safe, had done the same to all the other mirrors in the house. How could you stay in this house with all this happened to you, I asked her. She shrugged sadly. I don't have anywhere else to go, and no one will take me in. The nights were awful. It was always better during the days. At least then I could get some sleep. It always stopped by morning and never happened during the day. She suddenly shuddered until three days ago. Then it started happening all the time, day and night. I wasn't safe no matter what time it was. It all come to a head late this morning. The pounding had gradually gotten more violent and forceful until all the closet doors were rattling in their frames. Scaredy knew that you went boards nailed over them. It was only a matter of time until that thing broke through. In desperation, she began praying and reading from the Bible, which had only caused the entity in the closet to laugh at her mockingly. Finally, she had gotten out Bill's shotgun and fired it through the closet door. For a minute or so, there wasn't a sound, she told us. I started to think it was finally over. Then I saw those red eyes burning in the dark in the hole the shotgun had made. It chuckled, and it said one word to me. Well, what did it say, I asked her. Tonight, she said, and began to tremble. She lowered her head into her hands and began to sob again. Jerry and I were silent for some time, trying to absorb what she had just told us. We looked at each other, deeply troubled by her story. Neither of us actually believed it, of course. But it was obvious the poor woman was deeply disturbed. If she was some, having some kind of nervous breakdown, maybe her frayed grip on reality had finally snapped. Maybe it was old age was taking its toll on her mind. One thing was clear. It wasn't safe for her to be alone anymore, especially not here. It was not healthy for her. Hell, for all we knew, maybe her paranoid delusions were a result of some dangerous form of mold that had formed in the house. Jerry and I excused ourselves for a moment, then stepped outside to talk in private. We both agreed she needed help. She needed to be institutionalized. But for now, it was best she stay somewhere else. Went back in and told Mrs. Garrity that she was coming with us. She was going to spend the night in a motel room in town. And tomorrow, Jerry added, we were going to find a priest who would come and exercise this free evil spirit that had been bothering her, getting rid of it once and for all. She broke down again, this time crying in relief, and hugged me and my partner, thanking us over and over again. Well, she's finally getting the help that she needs, sounds like. Yeah, it sounds like they're they're really trying to get her like in some sort of institution. They're going to try to, you know, hold her uh someplace overnight. That's what I, it seems like to me that they're they're not really believing this story, but her story is terrifying. And if it's you are remotely true, this is a nightmare scenario. Yeah, it sounds like this is actually later in the day. All this is transpiring, all this is happening. And like you said, get her to a hotel and, uh, excuse me, get her to a motel until the next day when they can get her help, wherever that may be. 
it was a previous section that you you read when he said, "What the fuck happened here?" You really start to like put all the puzzle pieces together as far as how crazy of a state this house is in. Yeah. Uh, the, the the disarray and like all these boarded up dwarfs like that seems something that would be crazy to walk into. She looks in the mirror. She sees a I don't know how to describe it a monster. Yeah, it looks like a skeletal monster of some sort. And reaching out to her from the mirror, not so much as behind her as she describes it as being within the mirror. We've all seen that in a movie or had that fear, like we're gonna look in the mirror and like something else is like. Not even behind you, but it's like there in the mirror, you know? Yeah. And so she breaks the mirror, then she goes around and she destroys all the other mirrors in the house? Yeah, she breaks them all that day. And so, like, there's all these broken mirrors. There's glass on the ground, obviously. And so, like I said, he has definitely started to see, like, yeah, this is, we got ourselves a problem here. It's very much, she is in, you know, she could be endangering herself. She needs to be taken care of. And it's a really scary moment if there was nothing supernatural going on. Because this old woman who you've been, like, kind of taking care of, sort of, by going and visiting her during her calls. And, you know, just, like, calming down every time. And then you see her in this state. It's a scary moment for you, right? Because you got to be, like, thinking, how are we going to take care of her now? You know, we got to, something's got to happen. Just that alone, you can you can imagine their their the way they felt in this moment, but the way she's feeling with all that she's claiming to see, that's that's the craziest thing ever. Yeah. So what began as clawing at the closet door is now pounding in every closet door throughout the house. She's actually concerned that the pounding is so hard it's going to break through the boards. She began praying. And reading the Bible, I guess this made this entity, as we're going to call it, laugh. It was mocking her. Finally, she got the shotgun and fired it through the closet door. This entity was mocking her. Yes. So after it started making fun of her, she shot at it and then saw those eyes within the darkness. So, like, she walked up to the door and she was seeing these eyes in there through the holes. I'm not sure how close she got, but she definitely kind of, you know, peered so in. So through the shotgun hole, she could see these red eyes. Yeah. Just, that's absolutely terrifying. Wow. And then it said, tonight. It said, tonight. So they relieve her of this stress and say, we're going to get you help. They they have a sidebar conversation. Hey, she she's no longer able to take care of herself. This is a, she's a huge risk to herself. The situation's a bad situation. They're going to remove her from the situation. And like we, when we just started this discussion right here, they're going to get her help. Man, you still feel so sorry for her being all alone, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Jeff Townsend Media. CG, good night. And the question is, do I stay here? Will you be back? Are you going to come back? Will you be back? Are you coming back?